Malby is definitely unique on the landscape. I'm not saying those other places aren't pristine, but doing a direct comparison is not doing Malby Lake justice. So, oh, this got kind of weird. So this is, I'm, I'm using my iPad and iPhone to map, and I know some of my colleagues are like, that's not accurate enough, but I have a Bluetooth GPS that's like as accurate as any GPS you can find on the market. It cost me $600. So I go around and I, and I map with, with these two devices. And so these are just like, I'm not going to get into it, I just want to show you like, it's kind of fun, I get to put houses and walk around and, and there's a closer look at the lake of some stuff I'm doing. And so there's, I can choose from a whole bunch of different things to map. So I'm like actually on the ground and here I took a photo and that photo is where it's supposed to be and that was a beaver dam and here's a cool shawl on the lake and I get to just theme these things. Uh, there's a few trails and stuff. Um, and you can see that I can add stream crossings and top of bank and I can just say record a GPS and I'm actually like walking on these things. So I'm on the ground. And if anybody walks through Moby Lake not on the trail, you know why I have scrapes all over my body. Um, oh yeah, and here's like another thing. So here's uh, just what the classes look like. So this uh, trail around the lake, I called it Sheriff's Patrol, named after Woody and Carmel's old dog, uh, Danny, because you like patrol the lake. And you can take photos, and I put descriptions. And... Anyway, that's how I'm getting my data. But what I want to focus on is, actually, I want to focus on what's coming into Malby. So I want to focus on the streams, um, and I want to focus on the regulation around that with respect to development. So here are the streams that are mapped. There's actually one more on the northeastern quadrant, but it doesn't run directly into Malpe. It runs into Philippa Lake, which is the small little Malpe lake above the lake body. I just want to focus on the lake body and make it simple. Also, you can see those streams uh, in the top uh, northwest don't really hit Malpe Lake. That's because they hit this beautiful deltaic environment which right now it's not flowing. So one thing we have to remember is that whoever's gonna come out and appraise Malpy or like try to like map its streams, they're gonna come out in the summer. Well, the streams don't run in the summer. Nothing's running right now, it's silent on the lake. because so we haven't had our winter rains yet. And when the winter rains come, that's when the actual wetlands start flooding and, and these things start moving. So right now, like all these beautiful streams that I know so well are just waiting there underneath the ground to pop out. So it's just an interesting thing to think about. So as Mary was saying, is that Malpy is flanked by so many wetlands and there's more wetlands in Malpy than here, but these are the major ones because I don't want anybody saying, well, that's not a wetland. Like this is, these are bona fide wetlands. Like this is Trevlac Park and Lakes, if you know it. So like th these are very huge wetlands. What I want you to notice is like this, stream is actually a real one. I, I mapped it, I walked the entire thing this, this fall. Look how big the wetland is compared to the lake. So when people go to the lake, Malpy's so beautiful, it's like, wow, this must be it. Well, when you're standing at Woody and Carmel's dock where Trevlac Brook comes into the, into the lake, and you see that lake, imagine that double the size. And that's that wetland. It's huge, it's amazing. Okay, so um, here is what we call top of bank. So all of these areas here are just, oops, it's just the water's edge. And so if you look, if you just focus on any stream, you can see that this is the top of bank. So I actually walked on the top of the bank right where the ravine comes down. Okay, so whew, let's give you some imagery. So this is just Google Earth imagery. So let me take a step back. This is what the development is at Malby right now. These are the footprint sites. And in this Western culture, we really like to block off huge pieces of land and say, you bought that, there you go. There's 10 acres or 100 acres. But a better way to think of it is footprints. So you can see how small the footprints are of the people who live there right now because they're very respectful of the land and there's not a lot of development right now. Okay, so let's start rolling with this. So this is the property within the riparian area. You notice that most of it falls in the riparian area, meaning that it's there right now, but if that property goes away, like that building, it's gonna be really hard 
to put that building back, hence tear down, rebuild, is gonna be really, really difficult in those areas. Okay, so this is just without, this is uh, actually top of bank, so this is just going back to streams. I'm gonna run through this. So this is gonna be really quick. Riparian area regulation is a 30 meter strip on both sides of the stream. When a ravine is less than 60 meters, which is most of Malpe, it's 30 meters from the top of that bank, okay? When the ravine is bigger than 60 meters, it's only 10 meters, but most of it is 30 meters, and that's what I'm gonna to demonstrate to you right now. Okay, so here's the riparian area regulation, let's go. Uh, these little pieces here, these are spring deposits, and there's a lot more, this is just a choice few of them, and I use them in this. Okay, so here we go. The orange is 30 meters on every side of the stream, okay? So it's like, oh yeah, there's a lot you can develop there. I no notice I laid down these lot lines here. Well, that's what Sanders did for lot lines, which is really interesting on how to share a lake. Okay, so, <laughs> so you know, there's a lot. You're like, yeah, I could totally put my waterfront property there, no problem. Okay, so let's bring in the wetlands and streams. That was the streams, so that we're bringing wetlands now. Let's see the riparian area regulation on that. It's like, ooh. yeah, get, getting, getting a little bit more intense. Okay, now let's talk about top of bank, which actually is the regulation. Okay, so let's put that on. So as you noticed, there's really not a lot of desirable building locations ecologically around the lake. And as you notice from the sheriff's patrol, the trail really just goes around the lake. So the development assessments that were created were basically just looking at the RAR. So there, there's something to be said about that. And so that's the riparian area regulation, just with the hydrology, very simple stuff. My project goes well beyond this. I'm not a biologist, but I know there's some people in the room that we went around and know that there's a lot of rare species, terrestrial ones. So, oh, this is, I just showed the developable area that's not within the regulation. Okay, and, and then, but this is not to say anything about, this, to, about uh, rare species or beautiful protected Gary Oak and Arbutus uplands, which are most of the areas that are highlighted by this developable area. So if you want to think about that, what about rare terrestrial species in this context? And this is just blocks of areas where me and my friends and biological colleague, botany co colleagues went around and was like, whoa, yeah, there's awesome rare species here. So I kind of like grouped them into these areas. There's way more, but this is just not to be blowing it totally out of proportion. This is just like actual data. So it's like, okay, let's put some regulation around that. So I just dropped the riparian area regulation around that, just 30 meter buffer. And so as you notice now, it's like, well, what are you gonna, like, how, I, I'm not, I don't wanna answer any questions about development or anything. It's just interesting to look at this. As you notice from my title, it's communicating the sensitivity. So this is like my first step to show like, there's really nowhere you can go in Maltby and not have an effect if you start developing. It's just, from the data, that's what it says. And as you notice, like, as I said before, the magic happens right at Malpe. Like, if you just go across Prospect Lake Road, which is outlined by the property line there, like, you have Travelock Pond, beautiful, I love it over there. I go hiking in Travelock Park all the time. But there's really, you know, you have a big mountain to the west, you have just, like, open highlands to the east, and you have all of this magic here because there's huge geological fractures that hit the lake. The lake's nine meters deep. There's no other water body around there. It's something really, really unique and special. So that's something that we have to focus on. And that's, that's my talk. Thanks.